crop circles. What are these strange and mysterious symbols appearing all over the planet? Why are they happening? Who or what is doing it? And how are we to relate to this growing worldwide phenomena? I consider the crop circle phenomenon the most compelling mystery of our times. It's a, a multi-dimensional communication process that's going on. It's almost like sometimes these are done as a personal, I don't know, awakening or a personal gift. Let's say that for our days, these symbols are right for our time. They are symbols that speak to the heart. I just love it. I absolutely love this. I even still love the crazy people that are involved with it. Well, come over here and have so much fun. Um, I feel so lifted. This thing is so amazing, so huge. You have to be humble. You know, you can't approach it with an ego. You, you have to approach it with humility. Crop circles are an enigma. And yet, since serious research began in the past two decades, there have been over 10,000 recorded worldwide. Eyewitnesses to circles being made say they happen in a matter of seconds. <laughs> and they appear in every form of media that will receive them. Sand, snow, rice paddies, in trees even, and in fields of flowers left blooming. There should be joy in this phenomenon, and in fact there is a lot of joy because you can't see anything quite so beautiful as going in the countryside and seeing these absolutely marvellous things shining out at you. Right up to the present day, 2001, I've most probably photographed getting off of two and a half thousand different crop circles over the, that time. So it's still going on quite strong. In 1985, I asked the question, what on earth is going on? I found a lot of answers, but the only problem is the answers to create more questions. To me, they are means of communication. There's absolutely no doubt. And how everybody interprets that communication is, is a very personal matter. And I think um, crop circles, when people see a crop circle the first time, they almost recognize something. It's like a disturbance in the landscape. I think they're drawn to it. They are almost uh, like a, a mandala, which is a shape which is used in a lot of ancient religions and philosophies. Uh, it actually affects the subconscious part of the mind, and you almost are uh, left with a feeling, I know that symbol, I know that shape, you can't quite put your finger on what it is. We are being given an evolving narrative, and by close attention, we can see, I believe, where this narrative is taking us. My passion is very much to tell people what's going on because I think part of the problem with crop circles is that uh, most people are trying to draw conclusions based on very few facts. They know nothing about the real phenomenon itself. They, they tell us that there are many dimensions and level about the love, about the healing about the uh, harmony. It's almost like there's a door opening, just a crack to the unknown, and you've got your eye looking through that crack and you're seeing some vestige of this mystery, and I really want the door to open a little wider. Each individual design contains a mystery, and while their technical aspects may be interpreted, they also have highly mystical meaning. It was looking like an ordinary harvest for the Bickford farm near Red Deer. 
that was until they came across this strange and eerie sight. I don't know who would do this or what would do this, but it's just huge and I can't even believe it myself. The seven circles connect by lines to make a perfect star and take up nearly an acre of the Bickford's crop. It wouldn't be easy to create and they have no idea how it got there. It has to be someone or maybe it's an alien, who knows? When we consider the impact crop circles are having on the public imagination, there has to be an answer. By now, most researchers, known as croppies, have a pretty good handle on the phenomena and are keeping track on a year-to-year -year basis. My um, whole philosophy about crop circles really had to do with um, keeping an open mind, uh, looking at things from different points of view, always t uh, challenging uh, preconceived ideas. Crop circles have been around for a long time, with records going back to the 8th century and possibly as far back as the Bible. They continue with some frequency all over the world, in Australia, South America, the United States, Europe, Canada, and now up here in Asia. While many come to them, many reject them. Why? The first crop circles in the modern era appeared in England in the late 70s, and while quite simple in design, attracted a good deal of public attention. So around 1980, we start getting people like Pat Delgado, Terence Meadow, looking at the phenomenon, and we start seeing the phenomenon suddenly multiplying, uh, growing in complexity, uh, spreading through this area of southern England, to the point now where we're getting uh, 300 formations a year uh, in this part of the world. And around about 1989-90, we get uh, straight lines connecting circles. In uh, Hopi and native, other Native American law, straight line means communication. When you have circles connected with uh, circles and lines, you have communication between heaven and earth. Through that development, uh, we started getting pictograms. We start seeing symbols which now have a meaning attached to them, symbolic meaning. So we're able to see what those mean, go back and reference our ancient past, and find that there are relationships there, clues, telling us that these people, these beings, know about our history. And this history is a very, very fundamental history. It's a very basic history related to nature and natural principles. Once we learned that, we started getting onto alchemical symbols, uh, the Barbary Castle tetrahedron, for example, symbols to do with esotericism, symbols which have mathematical knowledge attached to them, knowledge of the planets, mathematical and geometric ratios. Once we learned that, they started developing into uh, solar system designs, uh, astrolabes, lunar symbols, uh, telling us that they have um, knowledge of the planetary motions of uh, the stars and the, and the heavenly bodies. Now this has been developing gradually uh, throughout the 90s and uh, at the moment where we are at, or at least last season, we're getting symbols which uh, are starting to stretch our imagination in what we can see and how we perceive the world. We have symbols which are four-dimensional uh, imprints on a three-dimensional field. Uh, these are related to visual paradoxes, which again go back a couple of thousand years to Greek mathematicians. It seems like it's, it's, there's a development going on and it's stretching the envelope each season. It's almost like we're the pupils and as soon as we learn the lesson or we take the lesson from the summer, we go away, dissect it over the winter, ready in time for the next season of, uh, of learning. Many circles have appeared near the white chalk horses in England. In Celtic mythology, the white horse was regarded as a messenger from the gods. My name's Polly Carson and I live in the village of Alton Barnes. This farm has been blessed, in my opinion, since 1990 with crop circles. Local farms had had them before. Uh, in fact, a couple of weeks previously, our neighbouring farm had had a large circle. And I do remember commenting that um, this really wasn't fair. Um, everybody was getting crop circles, but we weren't. It was a bit like keeping up with the Joneses, really. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, um, we had this one.
this was the first pictogram the, the world had ever seen. It was the first time boxes, rectangles, keys, straight lines, internal angles uh, had ever been seen in a crop formation. So it was quite a quantum leap from um, the sort of ordinary crop circles. And I remember um, phoning people, like I rang the police and said, well, we've got a crop circle, what are we supposed to do about it? And they said, well, I don't know. And I rang the Citizens Advice Bureau and eventually I rang the Ministry of Agriculture and the receptionist who answered it was a crop circle fanatic, knew Colin Andrews' phone number and gave it to me. So I was able to ring him and he came over and leapt in the air. And then the fun started really. Within 24 hours we were all over the world on the news, in the newspapers. Um, I mean it really went big and people started arriving and um, we very naively put signs up saying um, please could you view this from across the road <laughs> and they not only took the signs down but they actually took the fence down that the sign was on <laughs> so and we had thousands of people milling over our land and it it, um, it got a bit out of order really we didn't want to keep people out because it was a wonderful thing and we wanted people to see it for weeks we were inundated with people and it was it was fantastic it was like it was like a massive carnival um very exciting very interesting met lots of different people and it's brilliant really good recently there have been a few formations in british columbia also the first one being in vanderhoof in 1998 and that was a series of 11 circles of all varying sizes from about 15 feet in diameter to over 100 feet in diameter in one field. I went up to investigate those and uh, they were in the center of the field. There were no pathways into the formation. I went to the main circle and actually just felt like spinning and I spun around and I felt like I was going to lift off myself and I just felt really elated that's all I can say just quite elated and quite peaceful and it was just it was a sacred experience and I found myself wanting to go back and go back and I did. Van Hoof's a really neat community that it's a Christian community and uh, if there's a message that they want to tell us I'm ready to listen. I think we're blessed I just think we're blessed to have these here. It's been said that crop circles are like love letters, slipped under our door. Claims of hoaxing began in 1991 when the famous Doug and Dave came forward and said they'd made them all. Even though in 1990, the year before, there were 1,000 individual formations in England alone, and common sense would dictate that two men could not have possibly made all these in a period of three months. I find it quite incredible that the media picked up on Doug and Dave's story and without any evidence of any kind from Doug and Dave, trumpeted the story around the world. The subject lost credibility and uh, the media really dropped the subject and said well there's nothing in the subject they're all made by people and ever since it's had a hard time to really claw back the credibility it lost in 1990. Hoaxing is not an answer to crop circles and nobody's denying it doesn't go on and there are some very clever people out there but it doesn't answer the question like for instance where did they practice? Has anybody ever seen the practice ones? Or are you telling me that year in, year out, massive teams of people, without practicing, go into a field in the middle of the night, in the dark, and put down the most incredibly complex geometrical shapes without even having practiced? I mean, if nobody hoaxed, we'd be a lot further forward by now. I mean, I find it quite interesting that we've had this massive formation yesterday. It's almost as if this phenomenon is saying, oh, you're claiming you do these, are you? Well, do that one. This crop circle, called the Catherine Wheel, 
is 780 feet in diameter and is composed of 409 circles. It occurred on the top of a mesa on a windy and rainy night. If anything, this spectacular circle should put an end to the concept that they're all man-made. Something so enormous is happening in the world and it's treated so badly and it saddens me because you know, why can't we do it the other way around? Why can't we say, this is unbelievable, and, and, and let's assume it's genuine until we prove it's not? Instead of practically ignoring it, assuming it's all man-made, and this thing's trying as hard as it can to get through, and we're just ignoring it. Why is it so many refuse to look at the crop circle phenomena? when it's been with us for centuries? Why don't people read about it in newspapers? Would you like to have been the editor of the newspaper who published the headline, Earth is Round, Official? Would you like to have been the editor of the newspaper who published the headline, Heavier Than Air Flight, Now Possible? Would you now like to be the editor of the newspaper which publishes the headline Crop Circles Are Real, Meaningful, Made by Unknown Intelligences, Prodigiously Articulate, Worthy of Study for Our Own Salvation? Of course not. I think that um, the idea that we're dealing with some kind of otherness, um, some kind of other intelligence that um, is not human, um, is a huge question and I think it's a lot for people to contemplate and I think we live in a world where you know answers are very easy we, we it's comfortable for us um, to have to live in a world where we have all the answers and suddenly the crop circles come along and it's like they punch a hole in our reality it doesn't fit uh, our, our rational and uh, so that creates a kind of uh, shock to the intellect a lot of people react strongly against it because it is a shock. It hits, it hits, it hits the cer a certain belief, set of beliefs. And once the beliefs, once you hit a new belief system, then either you re you react and completely close close down, or you begin to question your beliefs. Most importantly, we should by now have grasped the undeniable reality of the fact that we are not, to use the cliché, alone. There are others out there. And in this case, the crop circles serve to reinforce the notion that the others are benign, loving, evolved and spiritual and care profoundly about Earth and its denizens. Whatever people's theory and assumptions and wishful thinking and whatever, you know, is behind people's understanding, one thing that everyone agrees on is that this exists. It's undeniable. There have been thousands and thousands all over the world. You cannot deny them. And in our database, we've got several thousand already. Unlike many, many things that have to do with out of the ordinary, it's actually concrete. It's in the physical. It's imprinted in physical matter.
much of the information that's coded into the crop circles is actually uh, invisible, it's likely to be below the surface. Here I'm talking about um, energy fields, uh, which are proved scientifically. We're talking about hidden geometry, which is encoded into the designs and not necessarily seen at first glance. Uh, and we're looking at esoteric information, that stuff that goes back uh, hundreds of years, in some cases thousands of years. Assembles as precise as, as mathematics. You know, it means something and doesn't mean other things, it means something. And it's been known for thousands of years, so it's very useful to go back to these ancient symbols. And lo and behold, we're beginning to understand how the world works, because that's what it's describing. It's describing the ancient laws, the cosmic laws. How does the universe work? How do we work? How do we fit in? What kind of matrix is this earth, you know? But all this was known to the ancient, and they've encrypt them in symbols and we, and when it's imprinted in the field it's an invitation to try and go back and try and understand what this is. I think the crop circles communicate with us in a way that totally bypasses our rational mind and I think part of the way that they do this is through their shape and vibration and human beings have a wonderful way of being able to be empathetic to vibrations. And we can see this in the way that human beings respond to music. It's not a rational thought process. Our responses are emotional and they're immediate. And, they, and very often they don't make very much sense to us. And our responses to shape is very, very similar. When you first see them, you think, I know that. I don't know how I know it, but I've seen this somewhere before. And something within you is remembering. Now, it can be your genetic memory, because we are all ancient. Our genetic memory is millions of years old. And are we connecting into our own ancestors who had an understanding of non-verbal communication, of using symbols as mandalas to move into other states of consciousness? Is that something within us that's been triggered by these symbols? We have here in England something uh, very unique. We have a small piece of land which is packed uh, a great density, not just with people, but with a tremendous amount of Neolithic sites, uh, sites which go back at least 8,000 years in some cases. Stone circles, cairns, dolmens, long barrows, tumuli, Stonehenge and Avebury, these are all very, very ancient sites. Now, we now know that crop circles are related to these energy lines. They are lying uh, on the same part of energy. They have been appearing for the last 30 years uh, next to or in the vicinity of these ancient markers, and they are influencing the energy of these ancient markers. So there is a correlation going on here. It's almost as if they are activating a sleeping network that was laid down many, many thousands of years ago that has only now come to life. These changes are measurable. And uh, they are having an effect on the local landscape, they are having an effect on the uh, water uh, that uh, lies around these uh, landscapes and the people that go in them. So there is a plan going on here uh, and as this plan takes shape it seems that the energy grid of the earth is going through a certain shift because these uh, crop circles are bringing down a certain imprint of energy which is affecting everything around them. The famous BLT research team headed by Dr. W.C. Levengood, a plant biophysicist, have done plant and soil analysis on hundreds of crop circle samples and have come up with some remarkable findings. And I too have done some experiments and found biophysical changes in the plants and stalks in, from the crop circles. A great deal of the plant stalks are bent at 90 degree angles at approximately one to two inches above the ground yet are not broken. In this particular formation, I found every single stalk had at least one node that was bent at 90 degree angles. And these are some of the samples from that particular formation.
all of them were bent either virtually 90 degrees or, as in this one, complete 90 degree angles. I decided to do a germination test. You have to take samples from within the formation and then also the control samples from without. Uh, as you can see right here, these are the controls from without. They're stunted, the seed heads are very small, they're about knee high. Whereas on the other side of this board here are the samples from the formation. They're twice the size, the seed heads are well developed, and the leaves are thicker and much healthier looking plant. So whatever the energy is that affected those seeds in the crop formation has made them germinate faster, germinate more completely, and uh, alter the growth pattern where they grow much taller. Something that's important to note is that when the crops are laying flat on the ground, the plant doesn't die, it continues to grow normally. There is a, an interesting feeling in this, uh, in this place, and as we get closer to the center, yeah. It's, it's a very similar, very similar feeling, but it's more uplifting. It's amazing. It has the most amazing energy ever. It's peaceful, but it's quite energizing as well. Quite a euphoric feeling. I felt really as though I was connecting with, with, with energy, with nature. You feel as though that's part of your connection, your roots somehow. And there's just this one group of researchers, of, of people like yourself who see the formations, who see the shape, and instantly go straight to the heart and it clicks. And we don't know why, we can't put the finger on to it, saying this is why, this is what happens to us. We don't know, but it happens. And it's on a very deep level and it's very intense. And it, to those people it does change their lives, it does, for good. I don't feel anything when I go in them at all. I mean, I think I'm about as psychic as a brick, really. No, I mean, I've tried, I've stood in them, um, when they've been harvested and I've meditated in them and those things. No, don't feel anything. Um, I know some people do and I've witnessed it actually. I've witnessed people feeling ill. I've witnessed people unable to go in. Physically unable. Uh, I remember once an elderly lady who desperately wanted to go in just felt there was a physical barrier there and she couldn't cross it. We're dealing with something which is leaving people with a spiritual experience. No matter who goes into these uh, formations, their view of the world is changed once they leave. You soak in the atmosphere, uh, just like you go into a church or a Gothic cathedral, and you are in awe of this, you are in awe of a presence. And it transforms you on the inside because it gets you suddenly to look at yourself from a different point of view. You exit these temples and your view of the world is su suddenly transformed. I think many of them have had really life transforming experiences for people. Um, they've gone into a formation and they've come out, they've come out totally changed people with a totally new perspective on life and, and it's lovely, it's, you know, they come out sort of like shining lights. Also the land itself has been affected. The energy lines, the ley lines are expanded. It's affecting us physically. Also, the grain goes into the food chain. So if you think of homeopathic remedies, the grain from the crop circles are in beer and bread and all sorts of processed foods. This is actually going all over the world. This has been exported. So a lot of people are actually getting a little drop of crop circle, whether they're re realizing it or not. The energy, just because you can't see it, it's there. And the easiest way to prove that it's there is by looking at the animal behavior around it. You'll find that animals who are much more sensitive than we are, they will pick up ultrasound to a greater degree than we can. And the classic example is the, uh, the dog whistle that humans can't hear, but your dog will come running to you if you blow it. Uh, dogs will act very agitated a night before a crop circle appears. When I came back from the last ones, the cat and the dog certainly reacted to me. They wouldn't come anywhere near me. The Canadian circles are very, very powerful and one of the 
one of the unique things for me, although I've had a lot of experience in England, is that in Canada I've had more what I would say strange and bizarre experiences such as hearing footsteps in the middle of the night while meditating in circles, seeing strange lights, watching animals uh, scared, spooked, such as geese flying over, dogs uh, refusing to come in. They've also had effects on electronic instruments, common household electronic gadgets, such as microwave ovens in a close vicinity, um, uh, two-way radios malfunctioning. We've even had farmers that have reported a lot of the same kind of things that happen in England. These are down-to-earth people. Farming is their living, that's what, you know, they don't have time for foolishness. So again, this comes down to a phenomenon that is experienced by a broad range of people. It's not just the researchers. The Saskatchewan circles, they were so, so neat and had the, the same glowing quality which uh, the better circles over here had. And there was one which actually wasn't flattened to the ground at all. It was, the, the, it was simply the, the heads of the barley had been turned inwards around the ring and then in the middle they'd been sort of turned down. It looked almost like the top of somebody's head. It's a mystery as to why this particular group um, should have uh, a quality which doesn't appear anywhere else abroad. Most of the Saskatchewan farmers that we talk to are very open-minded and actually did have, I would say, an above average interest in it or an above average um, level of acceptance of it. And to me that's just part of the implication that there is something or someone behind it because it's almost like it's picking out people even to do this with. It's almost as if there's a sentient being behind these because when someone attached interest to these they started replying back. Uh, lots of people saying well this is Mother Earth these are why we're getting these shapes in the fields she's crying out for help and Colin and George said, well, hang on a moment, you know, if this is the case, there is a symbol from Mother Earth, it's called the Gaia symbol. And lo and behold, the following day, there was a call from a farmer to Colin Andrews uh, saying, I've got one of these very strange things in my field, would you like to come down and have a look? And as they flew over the field, there was the Gaia symbol. Certainly uh, there have been experiments and I myself have been involved in one of these where people have tried to get crop circles to appear using the power of the mind uh, and it has worked and symbols have been asked for and predicted and anticipated so there does seem to be some interactive quality between the human mind and the phenomenon. In 1992 at the flying club at the time I was at Old Serum near Salisbury they told me there was a crop circle just down the road it's just about 10 minutes flying time. So immediately I got all my camera gear, got in the aircraft, flew over there, found the circle, took photographs, a video of it, came back, and they all asked, you know, how'd it go? And I said, fine. I said, it was a really interesting one. It was just silence. I didn't catch on at the time, but it took a year before they owned up that they had actually sent me on a wild goose chase to this spot, having had a pilot check it out prior to me going that there was nothing there. And I've watched them for up to an hour, and I've watched them move around. And I've tried to, on one occasion, a number of us watched these through binoculars. We tried to approach them. Every time we did that, they just fade out. There's no doubt at all that aerial phenomena and balls of light are associated with crop circles. I think there's now so much evidence that there is a very strong connection there um, that um, we cannot ignore it.
When I was a, a child, I used to live in a village near in nearby, and they always called me the fairy child because I always could see little balls of light round trees and plants, and really wondered why nobody else could see those little balls of light. And then as you grow up, you tend to lose that link with the nature spirits, you know, and some people think you're crazy. The first time I saw those lights again was with the first crop circle I saw. So I knew that there was a cooperation with the elementals and the nature divas. My name's John Todd. I was a former special constable with the Wiltshire Constabulary and I was stationed at Pusey Police Station. One night we were on a special assignment at a location called Frith Cops and we witnessed this light rise from the trees. It displayed a, a, a kind of shimmering, a kind of hovering motion and it had an outer ring of sun description with a bright central light. It had the ability to be able to dance all over the sky in different directions. This object, as we called it, it was quiet and it left at great speed and just just vanished. Um, we of course were quite frightened. I was there with another officer and and we were made, made pretty pretty rapid speed away from the scene. We didn't didn't really know what to expect. You know, it was it was something we've never seen. I was always very skeptical about flying saucers and, and anything with the subject, but I must say now I, I view it with an open mind. What do you think it was? What do I think of what, sorry? Yeah, yeah, what do you think it was? Well, um, I'm sorry, I missed that. Well, what, what do you think it was? What's your what do I think it was? It couldn't have been a helicopter. It couldn't have been an aeroplane. Nothing could move that fast. Nothing I, I know exists. Mm -hmm. um, I can only say it's an unidentified flying object. The next step of this is the assumption either A that we have something inherently engineered into our biology which recognizes certain shapes or B that there is an ancient cerebral memory which is being triggered by these formations. It's not just a splodge in the field, it's a very precise design. It's a symbol. And a symbol is something that describes that which is beyond the physical. just a few stems in the middle, the whole flipping thing comes from it. The centers of the circles also show a variety, swirling clockwise, counterclockwise, or even radiating outwards. Magic star? I don't know! Well, you're the farmer, do they ever lie down that way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's actually bent round the grass. Can you see down there? Look. The way the crop is laid down and shaped into patterns is also a mystery, forming arcs and curves, straight lines and even corners. Some have five or six layers overlapping, indicating a great sophistication in design. Today, after a good deal of hard research and in-the-field experience, it's generally concluded by researchers that these highly evolved symbols are from non-human sources, possibly extraterrestrial. In fact, many have witnessed glowing lights and strange craft over the places where crop circles have appeared. 
What has not been ruled out, however, is that Gaia, or Mother Earth herself, is sending thought forms to humanity. I believe there has to be an intelligence behind this. When you look at the evolution of how the formations have developed over the years, some of them are over a thousand foot in diameter of awesomely, hugely uh, precise mathematical uh, precision. Exactly what the mechanics of crop circles are, what the actual force that immediately lays the crop down it is obviously open to question. Some of the meteorologists did identify qualities which point to there being a system available in nature which can spin down the crops. But clearly something else is utilising that phenomenon or is nudging that natural force to create great complexity. I'm very strongly of the belief that we have an interface of an energy which is emitting from the Earth and an energy coming in to the Earth. I feel that the crop circle makers are component parts of all sorts of things. It's the power and the consciousness of the Earth. I feel it's the consciousness of the universe. I feel it's the acquiescence of the plant kingdoms and I feel it's our own psyche, our own spirituality, our own connectedness or divinity within all things that are also creating these symbols. So that when you have all those four things coming together, they hit a critical mass and an expression of that moment is placed in the field. So when people say, um, are we just dealing with UFO aliens or entities from another dimension? Uh, partly, yes. Uh, but you're also dealing with elemental uh, entities, uh, earth spirits, nature spirits, uh, what some people would describe as fairies. Um, there's a lot of evidence supporting this, as crazy as it might sound. But they're all here. All these, all these beings are here and now, witnessing this change in consciousness that's happening on the earth at this predicted moment in time. Some researchers are now coming to believe that crop circles are templates for a new human reality about to emerge. To help attune humanity to the new vibratory frequencies being brought to this planet. One of the fascinating things about crop circles is not just the visible imprint, but also the invisible imprint that comes with it. And sometimes the geometry that's uh, available in the design is not necessarily the one that you see. They combine ancient symbols with advanced mathematics and with geometry, sacred or Euclidean. The reason why it's sacred is because it was encoded into many of the, uh, the buildings that uh, our Neolithic ancestors built. The stone circles, the temples of the Greeks, the Egyptian temples, uh, and even as late as the Gothic cathedrals throughout Europe. These are all hymns to sacred geometry. Now, why is it sacred? It's sacred because these geometrical principles are very fundamental to life. These geometrical principles mirror and generate the actual ratios of the orbits between the planets in the solar system. They generate the ratios in between the atoms in the human body, and in fact, in all the cells of all living things. All the molecules are all governed by the geometry, which is called sacred geometry. So that's why it, it is sacred, it is part of life itself. It is the blueprint of God, if you like, in every living thing. So we find in crop circles that these geometries are manifesting themselves. In one formation, which might just seem like a pentagram, when you actually look at the relationship of the elements of the design, you'll find that it's not, it's not just a five-pointed star we're dealing with here. You'll find that hidden in there would be a relationship to a six-pointed star and a seven-pointed star. These relationships are very important because the geometry in itself is visual. What's encoded in the geometry is energy.
And it is well known that if you build a geometric structure on a strategic point of land, you will enhance the energy of the area around you. When we go in medieval temples or churches, these buildings were designed using certain proportions and harmonies and they were designed with skill because the builders knew that these proportions and harmonies would resonate first within us and then they would raise our vibrations so that we would aspire to something greater than ourselves. There's a great parallel there with the crop circles. They have very, very similar effects on people. The geometry is transforming you, and the same thing applies to crop circles. So when people say, well, I feel certain uh, lightheadedness in it, or I feel transformed, I, I feel very moved, or uh, I feel a spiritual experience, this is exactly what's happening, because it's the uh, energy encoded into the geometry that the body is recognizing, because it's recognizing itself. And you have these experiences because we're dealing with very fundamental blueprints of energy, which are geometrical in nature. It's a communication. Now, people have said, what's the difference between a message and a communication? And I would say a message is when you phone home and tell her to switch off the oven. That's a coherent lump of information. A communication, on the other hand, is when you stroke her neck. Um, a communication very often is far more articulate, far more powerful and far more difficult to encapsulate in a standard language. One of the things that fascinated me particularly about the circles was the connection with sound. There were designs that were giving me music ratios. They were giving my colleague Gerald Hawkins uh, diatonic ratios, which are all related to the music scale. They were showing me actual relationships geometrically to uh, ratios which give you musical notes. You know, the sacred sites were constructed as sound chambers and sound was most important because it shifted and changed and had an effect on us on every level. Of All the subtle bodies are affected by sound and vibration. And so when you step into a crop circle, it's alive. There's music going on and you take that music into your being and take it with you. I will understand everything is uh, based on the energy. So I study crop circle based on the energy point of view to use this uh, healing ability, our uh, healing message to help my patients. Your body become like an antenna. You start to test, okay, here's empty, it's nothing. You will find one place and suddenly like an empty hole, shoom, the energy will pour out. Did you feel the inside pouring now? Start Feel your hand almost want to pull. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's my, it. You my got it. Palms are warming up. That's right. Your palms are warming up. Your hands are pulling up. Without your thinking, you almost like a one body want to spread up the completely different yeah. and different size. Both palms are tingling. That's right. See. The fundamental thing that works with all the crop circles is that there's harmonics involved, whether geometrically with sound frequencies, electromagnetism, whatever. It's all about harmonics. And if we learn to be harmonious with one another and learn to be in harmony with one another, learn from one another, be cooperative, then we will be doing ourselves an enormous amount of good. And ultimately, that's the very thing that the crop circles are trying to communicate. If you look at this from an esoteric point of view, there's, uh, you could say that there's a lot of prediction that seems to be related to these happenings. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, the signs appearing um, in heaven and in the earth below at this particular point in time. 
Native American prophecies talk about a lot of the symbols manifesting at this particular point in time, uh, at the point where earth changes and changes in consciousness would take place. Um, we have the readings of Edgar Cayce uh, and other psychics who have predicted changes again for this particular point in time. So it seems to be connected to a, uh, a change uh, in, in our uh, actual cultural uh, perception of the world, uh, change and evolution as to where we are as people. And it seems to be predicted at, uh, at this point in time to happen before um, 2012, which is the end of the Mayan calendar. We really have come to a point now where we're on the we are on a razor blade, we're on a knife edge. And we have the possibility, we have the choice between evolving or devolving. And the mechanistic way of thinking that everything is dead and we can do whatever we want and, and it doesn't it has no consequence is taking us very, very fast to the to the to the iceberg. Very, very fast indeed. And I believe that um, that route is now close to us and we have to go in another direction. Part of the core of why we are being addressed now is that we are in the middle of a dimensional shift, a frequency shift, a density shift, a vibrational shift, which is shifting us from our current hard, mechanical, Newtonian reality of solid objects and linear time to a fifth dimensional reality within which both time and matter crumble away to that which is more accessible to and manipulable by consciousness. My interest in the crop circle phenomenon started in 1995 with the so-called missing planet formation. It had 65 circles in the outside ring or the asteroid belt. If you include the inter interconnecting ring, there were 66 circle elements, one for each book of the Bible. A second 1995 formation had 27 circle elements in the outside ring or asteroid belt, one for each book of New Testament. In 1996, we, we received two huge ram's horns formations and another crop circle formation in the shape of an ear with 39 circles, one for each book of the Old Testament. I felt this had to be more than accident. If an intelligence not of this world is trying to communicate with us by using crop circle pictograms, it would most likely use something easily accessible to all, such as the Bible. In 1997, I thought if these crop circles are fulfilling Bible prophecies, we should expect future formations to be those of the symbols of the seven churches in the book of Revelation. For example, a tree of life, a star of David, and a crown. Lo and behold, since then we've had a menorah tree of life, a Kabbalah tree of life, two crowns, and 12 major Stars of David formations, which makes Stars of David the most prolific crop circles of all time. Acts 2.19 in the New Testament quotes the Old Testament prophet Joel that the coming kingdom of God on earth will be blessed by signs on the earth below. Our crop circles these signs. Would you believe that the circle makers are using crop circle pictograms to convey the Christian biblical concept of God? I do. On November 16, 1974, an encoded schematic was beamed from the Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico towards a star cluster M13 by SETI scientists at Cornell University. Included in these scientists was the late Carl Sagan. It was intended to let other possible intelligent life forms know of our existence by encrypting several attributes of life here on Earth in an easily decipherable binary code. 
In August of 2001, a reply came back in a wheat field next to the Chilbotan radio telescope in England. The Chilbotan binary code reply had many layout similarities to the 1974 transmissions, as well as nine differences. The jury's still out on the authenticity of this formation, yet there are only a small handful of scientists on Earth who could decipher the original binary code and come up with such a sophisticated reply. Many feel the face on Mars formation, in the same field, was intended as a replica of the so-called face appearing in the original NASA photographs, now in dispute. However, why would the crop circle makers deal with a disputed image, unless, in fact, the original was real? Considering the great intelligence displayed so far in the crop circle phenomena, it is reasonable to conclude that the circle makers had something to say. We're, we're talking about the most staggering moment in human history. There is no doubt that within the next 10 years, we are going to have direct communication with our cousins. There is no doubt. This will be an event which will crumble our political, religious, economic, scientific establishments. We are not going to be happy about that. And indeed, we are not going to be prepared for this cataclysm until a critical mass of humanity has moved comfortably into the coming fifth dimension. And the circles, I believe, are attempting to bring us to a stage where we can accept it. Ice circles appear to be a new phenomena, witnessed by many. This ice circle could not be man-made, since it occurred in the wind and cold on a lake in the middle of the night, with the melting of the ice in all directions. Early Saturday morning, my husband um, came into the house and he said, Joan, there's something spectacular going on up there on the, at the creek. And I said, what is it? He said, you'll have to come and see it because I can't explain what it is. He said, and it probably never happened again. My husband and I ran up at the creek. I couldn't believe it. It was uh, a circle about 15 feet in diameter. It was so perfect that you just couldn't believe it. You couldn't walk on the ice, it was very thin. My husband saw it early and the circle was going around. It was just so perfect, um, like nature. This 1991 Barbary Castle Triangle is a replica of an ancient Kabbalistic symbol. To Aboriginal peoples, it represents the Great Mother. Our Aboriginal ancestors told us 
through different prophets that came about events that would happen around this time. The bigger circle is a timeline, a path that we're on, and the earth changes that will come. It's to let us know that there are star nation relatives and the spirits will help us through those changes and to not give up hope, but to remain strong and we'll see a new world emerge. We embrace the star people as our holy ones, as our ancestors once did. They have been helping us all along. They've never left us. I, I believe that this was a very positive experience. I don't know nothing about crop circles or swirls or vortexes or, or magnetic lines or anything like that. But in a short period of time, I had a crash course on crop circles. So now I guess you could say me and my brother are two crappies. <laughs> <laughs> Many Aboriginals regard the crop circles as medicine wheels of the future, fulfilling ancient prophecies and the mending of the hoop, healing the beloved mother. I believe the first thing that each one of us need to do is to get out of our heads and bring our consciousness to our heart chakra and then flow with the divine dance that is the phenomena of the crop circle. Allow ourselves to experience the gift. As a contactee, Judith claims the originators of the crop circle communique are from the constellation Arcturus. She states that Arcturian engineers are chosen by the Galactic Federation to provide the means of direct mind-to-mind -mind communication with humanity at this time. Formulas of light and sound frequencies are being emanated into the Earth's grid and ley line points at critical places in the planet to connect to frequencies that were previously sat into the grid system by star brothers and sisters that came here as far back as Neolithic times. A matrix was prepared, a formula for the ascension of this planet, the awakening of Mother Earth the birthing of Gaia. Each crop circle is a jewel of creation. Each crop circle carries fractaline formulas for healing the planetary crisis, for awakening higher states of consciousness, for activating our DNA from a two-strand DNA to the full 13-strand DNA. As each one of us scan these through our neurosynapses, it awakens an encodement in our DNA that interacts with the formulas and affects the collective consciousness. The crop circles are fractaline formulas of sacred geometry, and they work in the realm of quantum physics. But the formulas go beyond any quantum physics that is known to Earth science. Advanced mathematics, in some cases beyond our present understanding, are used in the circle designs. Fractals are the basic pattern of creation, which is replicated throughout the physical world, leading us to understand that creation is ever-expanding, ever-evolving. Engineers of these formulas have transcended time and space and bring forth manifestations of divine creation through high-level technology. This circle, called the Catherine Wheel, is a fractal and geometric code for the manifestation of new cycles of creation. It transcends our linear time. That is why we can't figure out how the Catherine Wheel could happen so rapidly, so massively. 
you really need to understand the concept of transcending linear time to understand the crop circle phenomena. On the Arcturian mothership, there are holographic chambers that carry the blueprint of each crop circle. These formulas then are brought into the Earth's energetics, and once they come into our biosphere, they actually become light and sound. This project's being carefully monitored by the Galactic Federation, which is like the United Nations in the purest sense of maintaining the planetary and the galactic peace. I uh, come from Australia, uh, where I know there is a lot of um, crop circle activity, uh, but my particular um, experience occurred in England. And uh, we had the opportunity to enter into a, uh, let's say, a fresh uh, newly manifested crop circle. As we entered into the crop circle, we immediately um, could feel the circular energy. We decided to lie on our backs and simply face the, the sky. I simply was taken out of my body. I was drawn up into what I would term a light ship, an ET light ship. Right in front of me were two uh, beings. Uh, I can describe them as being uh, rather small in stature. Um, they seem to be wise old men, but there was a sparkle in their eye and they were truly uh, very divine beings. I immediately said, who are you guys? They said, we are the crop circle makers. It was just telepathic communication. They simply were there beaming uh, this beautiful loving energy. Um, with these amazingly uh, crystal clear, um, strikingly blue eyes. And they really wanted me uh, to know their story. They described themselves as beings that were direct from the source with an Arcturian vibration. In reality, they had entered into a much higher level of, of uh, divine wisdom within their consciousness and that was why they had been given this great mission. Um, it was an honor for them to have been selected to do this. And I said, okay, how does this happen? And they said, uh, it works this way, that they get a directive from the God source. They combined their intelligence, their wisdom. Then they worked with the natural energies of the universe. This way, they said they did not harm the crop in any way, shape or form. In fact, they enhance the energy within the crop that you could take a piece of that wheat and uh, it would have the most extraordinary energy within it and uh, would be empowered divinely. They explained to me that the image was given to them into their consciousness and that holographically they would project this into the said position working with the electromagnetic um, energy of the planet, calling upon the elemental kingdom to bring that particular pattern into um, manifestation. They were, they described themselves as being artisans, that uh, this was their mission at this moment to assist in the spiritual growth or awareness of the human soul group and the planet. There was this sense of being very proud of the mission that they had volunteered to do. They wanted to bring the, uh, the awareness of fractality um, to uh, humans. That, that is the real secret of uh, expansion um, into a vibration of light, which is our destiny as a human race, is to manifest uh, the next level of our creation, which is a light body. And uh, in other words, we're talking about uh, the process of ascension. I did ask them a question. I said, will uh, humanity be um, successful in uh, their quest for enlightenment? And the answer unanimously was yes.
The Hopi prophecies speak of this time when we have a choice of either choosing the path of extreme purification or a gentler path. One of the terms that has been used through the Hopi prophecy is the emergence of the fifth world of peace. And literally, the Hopis have told us that we are transcending from the third to the fifth dimension. And a Hopi elder has recently said, we are the ones we've been waiting for. And I think that's where we are with the crop circles. They are here to change us from the inside. Uh, they're not coming here to change things for us. It'll be too easy to do this and God opens you a new line of credit and you know, we wipe off all the bad things we've done. Uh, it's not like that at all. Uh, you know, as the Hopis say, you know, we're the people we've been waiting for. And if we can change ourselves through the interaction with these uh, wonderful temples, uh, then that is the ultimate message because we change everything around us, we change the world with us, and by doing so, we actually acknowledge prophecy from every part of the world. There is a really good possibility that the crop circles are teaching us a way by showing us of making those manipulations to our environment so that we can evolve. Suddenly it's offered on a plate, it's dropped from the sky every night in the summer here. And when we look at these, it is universal knowledge that's been, that's been uh, conveyed there. So we, ha if we have an invitation to, to raise our understanding to a more universal level. Now that's evolution. They are, if you like, playthings scattered on the nursery carpet to train us to play with the big boys. Ancient prophecies speak of the return of an ascended civilization on Earth, a return to oneness. The great gift of the crop circles, really, is to help us awaken to our divine potential and the realization that oneness of being is our true state. They represent an emerging sacred reality, the coming of a new level of consciousness one of light, of spirit, of new design. Thank mm -hmm. you.